All right. Well, welcome back. It's a new year, 2023. So we're going to start a new lesson and a new section. And like I said, uh, for 1-1, one, one, for the quiz on 1-1, one, one, we will uh, work on that when you come back from the midterm break. All right. Let's take a look. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, that's right. My microphone. I left my microphone in my room. Sorry. So the mic, the sound quality probably won't be quite as good, but you could probably still hear me if you'd plan to uh, watch this video. So here it is. You may have heard this. You took Algebra 2 last year, right? Quadratic equations. Do you remember that? Okay. Why the word quadratic? It's a weird word. Okay. It does mean quad means four. So that kind of makes sense, right? Um, I looked this up at some point, not this year, but I put it in my notes. Let's say that's a square. Okay. Let's say one side is X and the other side is X. So if I wanted to find the area of this square, what would you do? Just the length times the what? The width. Okay. So what would the area of this square be? Length times the width. One side is x, the other side is x. So what's the area of it? Come on, guys. It hasn't been that long. It's only been two weeks. All right. What's x times x? X, x times x is not x. Just, well, you're right. You don't. If you said x times x equals x, you're absolutely right. I'm sorry. That's a pre. That's a pre-algebra. I'm not mean, just being, just being real. X times X is X squared, it's not X. All right, so there's a word, I looked it up. Um, I would have never known this. Quadratum, I guess is how you'd say it. Quadratum, I don't know. But that is Latin. I don't know hardly any Latin at all, but that's, Latin for square. So that's that's where that's where they derive the word quadratic from. Okay, quad again, quad is prefix meaning four. Quadratum it means a square. Okay, I don't know any Latin at all, but <laughs> there you go. Now I know one word. E pluribus unum. I know that. That's Latin. Out of one many. That's our. That's like our country's. I don't know what you call it. The saying, I guess. I don't know. Um, did you know that? E pluribus unum. Out of one, many. All right. Or out of many, one. I don't know. One or the other. It's probably out of many, one, I guess. All right. Enough Latin. We're not here to learn Latin. Uh, we're here to learn about quadratic equations. That's what we're doing today. So let me write down what the general formula for a quadratic equation is, or the general equation. Everybody writing this down? Now it's important. This right here, no big deal. It won't be on a quiz or a test or anything, but this will be, all right? So the quadratic equation means this. It's ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Notice it's a quadratic equation. So now what we're gonna do, we've done some stuff with quadratics before. I don't even know if we use the word quadratic, but we did some factoring. Remember trinomial factoring? You had something squared plus something x plus something, right? Um, we've done that before and we're gonna do that again. So hopefully you didn't forget all that stuff, but we'll we'll go through it. But this is a little different because it's an equation. So what's different about this? It's not really the right question I want to ask. Um, the word equation means this has what in it? It's got a what? An equal sign. Exactly right. Okay, it's got this equal sign. So this right here is an equation. It's equal to something. So what do you think you're going to do? You've had a little bit of experience with algebra. Okay, algebra one and algebra two, even in geometry, you had to do some of this. You have to solve, and what do we usually solve for? Now, you got a bunch of letters in here, but what, which one do you think we're gonna solve for here? Solve for X, that's right, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna eventually solve for X, but this right here is the general equation, okay, for a quadratic equation. Now, the A is gonna represent a number, all right? So this is gonna be like a three or something, I don't know. This is going to be a number. This is going to be a number. Everybody with me on that? The A, B, and C, they represent numbers. The X just stays an X, and that's what we're going to solve for eventually. All right, and we're going to start off pretty easy. 
We're going to take this little steps at a time. We're going to go back and we're going to learn some things that hopefully that we learned earlier in order to solve this quadratic equation. So let's do a couple examples. So this is example one. So example one, and it's 1a. So, oops, x squared plus 6x equals 0. First of all, is this a quadratic equation? Does this look like this? No. Not at all. Not at all? Sure, at all it does. Because look, there's an x squared, there's an x squared. There's a something x, there's a something x. There's an equals, there's an equals, there's a 0, there's a 0. So it definitely resembles a quadratic equation, doesn't it? So you can't say it doesn't look like it at all. I mean, it definitely looks like it, don't you think? You got an x squared, you got a something x. Now, you don't have c. You don't have a number that's being added here. But you do have equals 0, so it definitely looks like a quadratic equation. What if I asked you to tell me what the a, b, and c were on this equation right here? So what is the a? Is it x? It's 1. It's the number out in front of the x squared. What number is out in front of the x squared? Not an x, but a 1. Everybody with me? So the a, if I wanted to write it down, you don't have to do this, okay? We're going to get to a point where this might be helpful later on. Right now, it's not that big of a deal, but, but at least we'll get an idea of how to, how to do this later. Uh, what is the b? That's the easy one. It's the 6, right? It's the number right in front of the x. That's the su super easy one. Now, the C might be a little bit confusing, but what is the C? It's a zero. That's right, because there is no C, right? It's, it's zero, right? It's plus zero. You don't see it there, but you could put it there, couldn't you? You could always put a plus zero after everything, couldn't you? All right, so the C is what? Zero. Now, we will use these numbers over here, so I think it is important to recognize which one is the A, the B, and the C, all right? So that's the first part. Actually, to do the problem that we're doing right now, it doesn't really even matter. So what we're going to do is we're going to solve for x. And that's what, this, that's what all these problems tell you to do. They say to solve. What are we solving for? Well, we're solving for the only variable that's there. We're solving for x. So far, so good? Yeah, that's not, right? Nothing big deal. Really haven't done anything so far. All we're doing is looking at it, examining it, and saying, okay, this is what we're supposed to do. Now, what we're going to do is something that we learned earlier. The reason they taught it earlier is so now we could actually put it into practice. Because all that factoring stuff, I mean, like, really, what's the big deal? Why in the world would you need to factor stuff? Well, you factor stuff in order to solve for a variable. That's why you learn math. That's what engineers do. Okay, that's what architects do. Anybody that uses math, they do it because they want to solve for the variable. All right, and that's what we're going to do right here. We're going to solve for x. We're going to find out what is x going to be. So if I put it here and I put it here and I do all this stuff to it, it's going to come out to equal zero. We could sit here and just guess a whole bunch of numbers, couldn't we? We're like, okay, what about two? Does two work? Well, two squared is what? Four plus 12, that's 16. Nope, that's not zero. Let's try something else. We could keep doing that all day long. Is that very efficient though? Obviously not very efficient. So what we need to do is come up with a better way to solve for x. One way is to factor, and that's what we're doing. This whole lesson today, all today, is just about factoring, okay, to solve for x. We've done this before. If all I gave you was this and I told you to factor that, you should be able to do that. We've had that on quizzes. We've had it on tests, all right? You should be able to factor that. Forget the equals zero for right now. Let's just look at x squared plus 6x and factor that. This is one of our easiest factorings, okay, because it's a common factor. What is in common with x squared and 6x? An x. So we factor it out, put a parentheses, and figure out what's left over. This is ringing a bell, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, two weeks isn't enough to forget all this just yet. So if I factor out an x, what am I left with? We're left with an x because I'm dividing it, right? x squared divided by x is x. Put a plus. Now if I factor out an x from this, if I take this and divide it by x, what am I left with? Just a 6. Close the parentheses. Now, that we would have been done, right? In the old days, right? A few weeks ago, whenever it was, when we learned how to factor, um, you would have been finished. That was it. But we're not finished yet because this is equal to what? Zero. And what do we have to do? We have to solve for x. We don't solve for zero. We solve for x, okay? Now, 
Before we solve for x, let me show you something. Uh, they give this a name. I didn't write that name down in my notes. Oh, yeah, there it is. It's called the zero product property. And I think we've talked about this before. You may go back in your notes if you want. I don't think anybody will, but if you do. And what do we call it? Property. The zero product property basically says this. And I think we may have talked about this before. I can't remember if we did or not. If we didn't, now we are. Forget all this stuff for right now. We're going to come back to it, okay? We're coming back to this. I want to show you something before we do this. I have A times B equals zero. Now, let's think about when you multiply things and your answer is zero. So what do you think might be true about A or B or both of them? They're, they could be zero, right? Either one of them, okay? Um, I don't think this is the official time, but sometimes I think people call it the trichotomy Try. What does try mean? It's three. Okay. There's three possibilities. Either A could be zero. Are you watching? Or B could be zero. Or what? Both of them could be zero. Everybody see that? All right. So what we're going to do, we could say that A could equal zero. So if A is equal to zero, does it make this thing work right here? Sure it does. Because zero times anything is what? Zero. So A equaling zero works. Or, I'm going to put, let's say or. Or you could say what? B could be zero because it doesn't matter what A is. If B is equal to zero, anything times zero is what? Zero. So we call this the zero product property. Everybody with me on that? So when you have two things that are multiplied together and your answer is zero, actually two or more things. We'll just stick with two right now. If two things multiply together and your answer comes out to be a zero, that means one of those things had to be a zero or both of them could have been a zero, right? Because if A is zero and B is zero, zero times zero is still zero. I'm saying zero a lot, aren't I? All right, so let's come over here. Let's see how that works with what we're doing right here. You got two things that are being multiplied together and guess what our answer is? Our answer is zero, all right? So what do you think we're gonna do here? We're going to say x could be 0, and I, I don't know if I should put and or or. Let's put or. Put or or and, <laughs> okay? Because both of them could be true, all right? And or. I should have done it the other way. And or. What else could be 0? x plus 6. Very good. x plus 6 could also be 0. Everybody see that? Because this parentheses right here is being multiplied by x, so that could be a 0, or x could be a zero. Does that make sense from this? I got two things that are being multiplied to be zero. That means either one of them could be equal to zero. All right? Either one of them could be zero. So what do I do? I set this one equal to zero. And what else? I set the other thing that's being multiplied equal to zero. So I set them both equal to zero. That follows from this, doesn't it? Does that make sense? I think it does. I think I explained that pretty well. Do you? I know, Gage. But just watch the video and just take your time, okay? Because I think I explained it pretty well. I don't know how to explain it any better. So let's keep going. If you have two things, listen, it's not that hard. If you just open up your mind a little bit. No, no, no. Listen, you're already putting a roadblock. In, you're putting a mental roadblock in front of you. You do this all the time, almost every single day. Okay, every time I do something that's a little bit new, you say, you always say, I can't do this, I can't do this, I can't do this. You have got to stop saying it, okay? That doesn't mean automatically you get it, but you're automatically going into everything that I do new and you're saying that I can't do it. And you're saying it again. Okay, you have got to have some self-discipline and say, look, I may not understand it right now, but if I do this enough, then I'm going to be able to get it. That has got to be your mindset. I know not everybody gets it the first time. I, I rarely, <laughs> I remember sitting in my college math classes and thinking, oh my word, I have no idea. He's speaking another language. I have no idea what he's talking about. But I didn't sit there and say, well, there's no way I can do this. I can't get it. Ugh. And then just shut my mind off. I can't do that. All right. Because then you will not be able to ever do it. You've got to be able to say, all right, 
he gave me an explanation. I'm gonna back then I didn't have a video to back to refer to. We didn't have any videos back then. Um, but I would take notes and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go and review the notes. I had people that were in my class that were understanding what the teacher was saying. So I would go to them and I would ask them, did you understand what he was saying today? Sometimes they're like, I have no idea, right? But sometimes like, oh yeah, I got that. And then I would go to him and ask him, say, could you explain it to me? I had to do that a lot. I really did. Bathroom, right? No. What? <laughs> Do we have what? My, MySpace. We didn't have any computers. There was no internet. <laughs> there, there was no internet. <laughs> okay, so we didn't have any social communication. That's how old I am. Okay, we had no cell phones, no nothing. We actually had to talk to people. All right? So we would talk to them. I was amazed. I'm still amazed today. Every time I get on the internet, I'm like, I can't believe this is real. I can't believe when I pull out my phone and I look something up on Google that you can actually do that. Believe me, I'm amazed every single time I use it. Um, because when you, when you grew up not having it, it was just a dream. I was telling my son the other day about that. I was like, I was like, I was telling him all these stories about things we didn't have, you know, and I was like, I remember my dad telling me those stories, you know, and thinking, man, that was that would have been terrible to live back then. You know, they didn't have this, they didn't have that, or whatever it was, you know. And now I'm telling the same stories. And I told my son, I said, guess what? In 20 years, 30 years, you're going to be telling your kids the same exact thing. I mean, that's what's amazing. In today's world right now, in 20, maybe 10 years, okay, 10 years, 15, 20, 30 years from now, you're going to be telling stories to people that are younger and saying, can you believe we didn't have this? We didn't have that. And I can't even imagine what you would even tell the stories about. And that's the way I was when in high school. But anyway, we didn't have that stuff. But let's continue with this. So what are we trying to do? We're trying to solve for X. We got one answer for X. What is it? Zero. So let's circle it. We're almost ready to find another answer for X. So what is X right here? X is what? Negative six. I just subtract a six from both sides. Guys, please. And there's my answer right there. Let's see if it works. Remember I was sitting there and I'm like, hey, let's try a number to see if I put it in here, it's gonna be zero. I could sit there and take days and days before I came up with this probably, all right? Let's, let's see if X equals zero actually works. Let's put a zero in for this. What's zero squared? Zero plus six times zero, which is zero. What's zero plus zero? Does, does X equal zero work? Yeah, it does. So that's one of my answers. But this is a little different. We don't just get one answer. Now we're getting two answers. And we got to check them both just to make sure they work. Okay. So let's put it in here. Let's put a negative six. And I'll write this one down. Let's put a negative six in for the X. So it's negative six, what? Squared. And we got to put it in parentheses because we have to square the negative as well. All right. Plus six times what? X, which is negative six. And let's see if that equals zero. Let's see. What's negative six in parentheses squared? It's positive 36 because a negative squared is positive. What's this? Six times negative six. It's negative 36. What's 36 minus 36? Does it work? Yes, it does. Okay. So those are my two answers. I get zero and I get negative six. So you thought it was bad just getting one answer for X. Now, guess what we're doing? We're getting two answers for X, all right? You're eventually gonna get three, but right now we're just gonna get two, all right? We're not gonna get into that just yet. All right, with all that said, let's do a couple more and we'll kind of get in the swing of things here, okay? I did a lot of explanation on why you do what you did. Let's do a couple more examples and hopefully it'll make it a little bit easier for you. That's why we do just more than one. Let's do another one. This is example one, part B. 2x squared equals x plus 3. So is this a quadratic equation? Do you remember what the quadratic equation is? It's this. That's the quadratic equation. Okay, Carter. 
exactly right. Okay, good call. Everybody watch. So this technically is this. Okay, it doesn't look like it because you got the x plus three over on the right hand side and this has a zero on the right. But Carter said, why don't we take this x and move it over to the left and take that three and move it over to the left. All right, let's do that. That's not too hard. How do I take this plus x and move it over to the left? Subtract an x. Don't add an x. I subtract it. Then it'll cancel out. I'm going to do a little bit of this in our head, okay? So I'm going to move this over. i got to subtract an x. It'll cancel out on the right side, and i got a minus x on the left side. Everybody with me on that? Yep. Let's do the same thing to a 3. So it's plus 3. How do I get rid of that plus 3? Subtract a 3 from both sides. Now, remember what happened here. I subtracted an x, and I subtracted a 3. So what happened? They cancel out, but they don't just cancel out. They add up to 0. And there you go. Now does this look like a quadratic? By the way, it doesn't always have to be plus. Even though it's plus here, technically this is a plus. It's a plus negative 1x. This is a plus negative 3. So technically, it is a plus. Okay, but we just don't put plus negative 3. We just put minus 3. Would you agree? Yeah. Now let's take a look at this. What did we have to do right here? Oh, I'm sorry, right from, from this step to this step. What did we do? Give me one word. Factor. So what do you think we're going to do from here to the next step? We're going to factor. This whole lesson today is about factoring, okay? But we're going to solve for x after we factor. This is not a common, this doesn't have a common factor, but it is one of those trinomial factoring, Okay. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put a 2x here and an x here. I'm just going to put what they are, okay? I'm not going to take the time because we're starting to run out of a little time here. I'm not going to, like, explain everything to you about the factoring, but let's put it in here. So let's put a negative 3 and a plus 1. I will do this, though. So let's see if this actually works. We've done factoring. We spent a whole chapter on factoring, okay? So I can't rehash that whole entire chapter again, all right? But this is factoring. Let's see if it is. Let's do the FOIL method. 2x times x is 2x squared, correct? What about the last ones? Let's do the first and the last. Negative 3 times positive 1 is negative 3. So far, so good. Now, what does the outside and the inside have to do? they got to add up to be what? Negative 1. Let's see if they do. What's the outside? It's 2x. What's the inside? Negative 3x. What's 2x minus 3x? Negative 1x. Is this factored correctly? Absolutely. Okay. So again, I can't take the whole rest of the class trying to explain why this factors the way it does. That's something that we were supposed to learn before, okay? Mm -hmm. But there it is. It's factored. It's good to go. Now the new stuff. You got two things that are multiplied together and your answer is zero. What did we just talk about that? We call it the zero product or the, yeah, the zero product property. So if these two things multiply together and your answer is zero, what can we do to both of those things that are being multiplied? set them equal to zero. That's right. That's what we did here, isn't it? We set x equal to zero, and we set x plus six equal to zero. Over here, we set the a equal to zero, and we set the b equal to zero. So what are we going to do right here? We're going to set this equal to zero, and we're going to set this equal to zero. So let's do that. So it's 2x minus 3 equals zero, and we got x plus 1, and we set that equal to zero. You understand why we did that? Because, again, for about the fifth time today, I'll say it again, because repetition is the key to learning, all right? If two things are multiplied together and your answer is zero, what must be true about either one of those or both of them? Either one of them have to be zero, correct? That doesn't mean necessarily x has to be zero, but the things that are being multiplied have to be zero. So this thing could be zero, so we set it equal to zero. Or the other one could be zero. So we set it equal to zero. And now we just do a little bit of, of algebra and solve for x. Let's do this one. Add a 3 to both sides, right? That's 2x equals 3. Divide by 2. Divide by 2. x equals 3 over 2. Is there any way in the world you would have looked at that original problem and guessed that x was equal to 3 over 2? I don't think so. That would have taken you a long time to guess that. Right here, let's do this one. That's an easy one. Subtract 1 from both sides. What's x? It's negative 1. So we actually get 
two answers. There's one answer, and there's another answer, all right? I'm going to put an and in between them. So x could be this, and or, I'll put and or, okay? And x could be negative 1. You with me? That's how you do it. Um, in the book, you're going to see it written like this. They're going to put like this little set notation. You've seen this before. And they'll put like negative 1, comma, 3 halves. Oh. Oh, yeah. Does that mean it's time for class to be over? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that right there is your uh, answer. That's the way you'll see it in the book. Okay, if you just circle them like this, I'm perfectly fine with that. Okay, but it, when you look in the back of the book, you'll probably see it like that. But that's what it means. It means x is negative 1 and x is also 3 over 2. We good? Let's do another one. The more of these you do, the better you'll get. Um, this is example two. It's kind of like what we just did. So again, all these say solve. I didn't write that on the last one, but they all say solve. So it's 9x squared minus 6x plus 1 equals 0. This is a little easier because it already looks like a quadratic, doesn't it? I don't have to move things to the other side. It's already x squared x, a number equal to zero. We good with that? Does this thing factor? Well, it does because this whole section that we're doing today, everything factors. It's not always going to factor. Later on, we're going to be doing stuff that's a little more involved where you won't be able to factor it, but you're still going to be able to solve for x. But right now, we're going to factor. This is actually, I'll give you a hint. This is a perfect square. Do you remember that? Remember perfect squares? So how do I know if it's a perfect square? Well, what is this? If I take the square root of that, what is it? It's not just 3, it's 3x. Okay, if I take the square root of 9, I get a 3. Take the square root of x squared, I get an x. What if I take the square root of 1, what do I get? I get a 1. That is something. Okay, I get a 1. All right, you with me on that? Now, how do I know if this is a perfect square? I multiply those together, which is what? 3x, and then I double it. Do you remember that with perfect squares? If I double it, does that give me a 6x? Yeah. Absolutely, it does. Okay, so is this a perfect square? Yeah. And what are my what are my squares? Or what are the things that are being multiplied? The 3x and the 1. Now, this is a minus. So what's my sign in here going to be? It's going to be minus. So it's 3x minus 1 and 3x minus 1. If it's a perfect square, both of them are exactly the same. Again, go back to the videos where I talked about factoring, look the one up where I talk about perfect squares. I can't take the time to delve too much more into that, all right? But that's a perfect square. Now, this is all equal to what? Zero. Now, what do we do? I got two things. I'm gonna say it, how many times is this? Six or seven now? Probably. I got two things that are multiplied together and my answer is zero. So what do I do with both of those things? Set them both equal to what? zero. So I set that equal to zero. Now watch this. I'm setting the same exact thing equal to zero. So am I going to get two different answers? No. I'm going to get one. I get two answers, but they're both going to be the same exact answer, right? So I don't really have to do it twice here. You understand? Mm -hmm. On this particular one, because they're both exactly the same thing. So let's do some math. Add a one, add a one. Okay, divide by 3. Everybody's got that part down now, don't you? Mm -hmm. So x equals 1 third, and that's your answer right there. You could always check it to see if it works. we got a couple minutes here. Let's check to see if it works. Put a 1 third in for the x. That's not that hard. It, it looks like it's difficult because it's a fraction, but it's not. What if I take 1 third and I square it? What's that? What's 1 third times 1 third? One third times one third. Just multiply straight across. Somebody, somebody tell me. Let's think. What is it? One ninth. You multiply straight across. You don't add. You multiply straight across. Okay, so one third squared is one ninth. What's nine times one ninth? Nine over one times one over nine. It's one. They cancel out, right? Nine over one times one over nine. You guys are scaring me to death here. All right, so that's a one. Okay. Let's put the one third in for this. Six times a third. What does that mean? That means six divided by three. 
which is a two. Okay, so that's a two. You got a minus. Does this thing actually come out to be a zero? Sure it does. One minus two is negative one. Negative one plus one is zero. Does it work? Yep, it works. There will be times, not right now, there will be times when you're gonna get an answer. You did everything right, but then you plug it back in and it doesn't work. You're like, Mr. Hammer, come on. This is hard enough, all right? How in the world am I gonna come up with an answer and the answer doesn't even work, even though I did everything right? Well, we'll get to that when we get to it, okay? So what was, what was the gist of this lesson today? The factoring wasn't really the big deal, was it? It was that zero thing, exactly. When two things are being multiplied together and your answer is zero, what do you do? You set both of them equal to zero. I've said it a whole bunch today, haven't I? Okay, that should, I don't know how else I can say it to make it make sense to you. That's about as clear as I could possibly be. If you got two things right here, this is times this, it's equal to zero, what did we do? We set them both equal to zero. And then we solve if we had to solve. In this case, yeah, we had to solve for x. This case, x was already zero because it was by itself, okay? Down here, we factored. We got two things that are multiplied together. My answer is zero. What did we do to both of those things? We set them both equal to zero. Set that equal to zero, set that equal to zero. We did some math, we got our answer. Over here, we had to factor. We set both of them equal to zero. We get our answer. They're both exactly the same. That's why I didn't have to do it twice. Everybody understand that part? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I just got one answer. This one only has one answer, okay? A lot of these though, I would say most of them have two answers, okay? That's not so bad to start off the new year, is it? Yeah, it wasn't too bad. Okay, so your homework. Oh. Well, I won't give you homework tonight. Yes, sir. Because we'll call this part A. All right, I'll tell you what it is. Just if you want to get started, if you want to do like half of them, I don't know like which ones are which, but section one, two, we'll call it A. I'm eventually going to give you all of these. Nine to 33 odds. Oops. Now, I don't know where it stops with what we just finished doing right here. Um, but you could go through them, right? Start at nine. I would say probably, I don't know, maybe the first half of these are the ones that we did today. But there's some other ones that I meant to get to today. But we just ran out of time because it's chapel and we talked a little bit at the beginning. So, um, But that's eventually going to be your full assignment. I'm not going to collect it tomorrow, but if you want to get a head start on it, Look to see the ones that, were, that are like the ones that we did today and see if you can get those done. And then you don't have to do as many tomorrow. Tomorrow, I will assign that whole entire thing. Everybody got it? All right.